Asha, don't move too much because your camera's autofocus is really slow. Okay. <laughs> Hi, so I don't know if you're aware, but I surely am. The 2016 Victoria's Secret fashion show has, has finally dawned upon us. It's either a time to either reflect on your physical appearance, or two, reflect on your diet, or three, just reflect on how the world is just not fair. Angels, just angels. And as you can see, I tried to um, dress up for the occasion. I don't think it came across very well. So dear Asha, how does this video relate to anything to do with modeling? And this is why. So in a way, I can call myself a retired model. I modeled for about five to six years of my life and now I can look back and sort of come to terms with how ridiculous life was as a model. So Asha, why are you making this video? Is it out of spite? No, no, it's not. To cut a long story short, YouTube brought me modeling and modeling brought me the money to pay my bills, my utilities, to buy food, to sustain my life as a human being whilst I was in Hong Kong. And so, no matter what I think about modeling before, then, now, or whatever, I will always be internally grateful for what modeling has brought into my life. And to be honest, I'm just tired. Tired about worrying about how I look to get a job. At least to me, mentally, it just wasn't healthy. If you've been in the modeling community, you'll either be overly confident or you'll cause yourself a lot more insecurity than you need to. And I was the latter. I started out as the youngest at a casting. Then a few years later, I became one of the oldest. And I was just sitting at casting, looking at these young bloods. Just, ugh. They change by the season, but they're still all much younger than I was. <laughs> no matter what, there will always be skinnier, prettier, and younger girls out there. No matter what your parents tell you. Love you, dad. <laughs> Here's the thing, because every time I went to a casting, my dad would always reassure me. He would always tell me, you have such a fresh face, it's their loss, or you're so much prettier than the other girls. Dad, you're biased. It's because I am your spawn. I am your kid, dad. Thank you, but that's not the case. <laughs> so let me get back to the main point here. In this specific career, your job interview struggles aren't the most common. During these job interviews, unlike most, you're not getting judged on your education or any of your certificates. You get judged based on your looks. I mean, comparing your CV with your educations and your qualifications is one thing, but comparing your DNA, your genes, just your genetic makeup with other people is just stress overload. Nobody needs that in their life, especially me. Okay, I'm gonna go say we now, even though I'm a retired model, but because I'm retired, I still count myself in the modeling community. So I'm gonna say we now. I hope that's okay with all the active models out there. Wait, please don't reject me. We have zero qualifications for what we do. There is no degree in posing. There's no certificate for smiling. We get judged based on our smiles, our posing, our skin, our height, our weight, and our DNA. Those are our qualifications. And of course, I wasn't complaining back then. I can't complain now because I'm not in it anymore. But back then, I really, I couldn't complain because I knew what I signed on for. I knew what to expect when I signed that contract. This is what was gonna happen if I wanted to earn money and if I wanted to get a job. I would have to get judged on all this. This. Needless to say, I didn't earn too much, but that's a different story. Moving along! <laughs> my waist is regrettably no longer 24 inches. My hips, needless to say, are no longer 37. Honestly, I'm just glad I don't have to deal with that anymore. And I sincerely admire all of you, all of those who are still in the modeling industry. I'm already self-conscious towards my appearance as is. And being judged for it every single goddamn day is just... <laughs> you go, you. You, you. you nail that costing. I believe in you. Go get them, girl. And see, that's the thing with modeling. Just because you go to one costing job interview, that's not gonna be your job for the rest of the year. That's just for that one job. It's individual jobs. So for each individual job, you have to go to individual castings, which means picture yourself waking up and getting ready for a job interview every single day. But all that matters is how you look. Wouldn't that drive you crazy? Oh, that drove me crazy. 
It's still, just thinking about it drives me crazy. This picture used to be my rice bowl situation. Rice bowl? So there's this saying in Chinese, 全法文而脏法文. Directly translated, it means to fight for a rice bowl. And in this cryptic message, rice bowl actually means job. After I took this picture, another six or seven models entered the room. And just the percentage of me attaining this model rice bowl started just dwindling in front of me. Just practically minus zero percent. Is that even a thing? I don't know, I'm bad at math. Huh, still a model. Too many mouths and not enough bowls. And we were all pretty fucking hungry. <laughs> no pun intended. Because you know how people say models don't eat? We're hungry for the rice. Okay. No matter how many episodes of America's Next Top Model you've watched, I honestly believe that personality plays a very, very small role in castings. Very small. I mean, come on, how much personality can you share in just five minutes without you coming across as overly confident or conceited or mildly self-centered? How? How? Me, 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 talk to me. See how easygoing I am? See how photogenic I am? Me, I'm so much better than her. Me, me, me. Please hire me, please, please. It's been so long since I booked a casting. Please, my agency is threatening to deduct my, my pocket money. And I don't, I don't know how many more model dinners I can go to without being chucked out of the club. I just, I can't. Everyone back home said I was so pretty. <laughs> That's the reality. And this scene replays, just like the person before and after you. They've seen a thousand copies of you. So it's simple. If they like what they see, if they approve of your DNA, you get the job, the campaign, the TBC, the money. If they don't, maybe next time? At least until they've changed who's in charge. <laughs> or until you've become moderately famous. Or if you're lucky, all you had to do was change your hairstyle. <laughs> Lies. If not, there's always plastic surgery. I mean, it really all just depends on how badly you want this career. To eat you alive. So, smile for that bowl, baby. And that was that. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. I've been saying please give it a like in my past videos. I don't know what the hell was wrong with me. Please give this video a thumbs up. If you did like this video, it was from a blog post I wrote last year while I was at a casting, as a matter of fact. If you'd prefer not to hear me speak and you'd rather read what I have to say, please go check out my blog, Secondhand Mermaid. Link is in the description. If luckily you did enjoy this video, please subscribe. There's a button over there for you to subscribe. Here's me doing other vlogmasy videos. And I think that's it. Is that all I have to tell you? I think so. And I'll see you tomorrow for vlogmas. Book me, book me, I'm all personality.